I can't believe it. In the last couple years, I would often think to myself, when did Seiko lose heart? I think it all started with the loss of the names. What's in a name? Well, just ask Rolex. They will tell you a name is extremely powerful when it comes to watches. And Seiko just stopped naming everything. We were getting heartless, sterile versions of icons from the past. We looked at the navigator timer, no navigator on the dial. We looked at the landmaster, no landmaster on the dial. The Seiko Alpinists, they don't say Alpinist. Even the Marine Master, what we all think of when I say Marine Master, doesn't say Marine Master for God's sake. But today, I think Seiko has woken up and have turned a new leaf. And boy, oh boy, did they come out swinging. They took the 62 MAS, their number one golden boy, and gave it the Marine Master treatment. And I'm beyond hyped. Now let's get into it. Introducing the all new Seiko Marine Master 62 Evo. That's what I'm calling it because this watch is the 62 mass evolved. It's got the traditional 62 MAS profile arch with new Marine Master style bevels that will simply put a smile on your face. <laughs> they are gorgeous. But the actual bevel itself has a gentle curve. It's almost like a sexy sports car fender, not just a simple flat cut. And this makes me extremely happy, not because the watch looks good and feels high quality, but because this is proof that Seiko put a ton of thought behind this case. It's deceivingly simple, but I think they agonized over it. Now the crown is going to get criticism. It's not signed, but it's nicely finished and it's got hexagon cutouts, which gives it almost like that coarse knurling style grip that I love from vintage King Seiko's. It's like a contemporary version of that. Okay, we have to talk about the bezel now. It's beautiful. It's like the high-end LX Marine Masters evolved. They brought the teeth together and gave it a blunt edge, all while maintaining that beautiful downwards taper that the LX had. Overall, I'm a big fan of this bezel. But how does it feel and how does it sound? Okay, first off, the grip isn't the greatest. It's kind of slippery and you're getting the typical Seiko soft click dampen feel with that settle back. If you felt a Seiko bezel before, then this will be pretty familiar. Just a little bit more precise than the mid tiers. Okay, moving on to the dimensions. I got 38.6 millimeters in diameter, bezel 39.5 millimeters, and the secret measurement is 29.5 millimeters. And we got a thickness of 12.3. We got drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 46.8. Man, I love what they did here. The 62 mass has a trademark blocky look on the wrist. And I know a lot of people don't like that, but they love the 62. They love how it looks in photos, in video, but not on the wrist. So they fixed that with this new watch. Those beautiful bevels give this Marine Master such a streamlined modern look while maintaining the 62 mass identity and wrist presence. This is the best 62 mass case they've ever done. So something I'm not happy with is the boxed sapphire. It's barely a box and barely noticeable. They had to do that to maintain the thinness because of the added thickness from the case back. We got to remember here, it's a certified 200 meter ISO diver with a sapphire display case back. And I will bet it's capable of 300, but I think they kept it at 200 to differentiate it from the 300 line. And this move definitely makes me think that in 2024, we're going to see the Marine Master name return on the 300 series, which I know a lot of people are going to be happy about. Now let's take a quick look at the bracelet. It's nothing special, typical Seiko pin and collar bracelet with beautiful brushing mixed with high polish accents. 
The links are eclipse shaped and it's completely solid, 20 millimeters tapering down to 18 and it's got a pressed dive extension and a fully milled clasp with a pathetic two micro adjustments. It's very comfortable, but I expected better. Like, come on, Seiko. But what about that dial? The dial reminds me of the Omega Seamaster, but I think this one looks better. The Seamaster's waves look like a child drew them. This looks a little bit more professional and it does play with the light in interesting ways. It creates some shadow and light play and gives great contrast. The indices are pressed and have zero finishing on the edges. Seiko did not polish them too good as you can see in some of the macros. Hold up, I know some of you may be running to the comment section right now. But wait, there is some good news. The hands are incredibly clean and the dust level is incredibly low. So in those two categories, this outperforms my Tudor watches. Which, if you know Tudor's QC, it's actually not a big surprise. And you guys are going to complain about it, so I gotta mention it at least. The 430 date window. It's hard to read, very tiny, and some would say useless, but it is a sales tactic. For non-watch enthusiasts, they have to have the date. Okay, so what about that loom then? Is it a W or an L? Well, something in the middle. We got Seiko's powerful Lumabrite formula and it is thickly printed on top of those indices. So it's going to outperform the mid-range divers, but not the deeply filled divers. Okay, we're going to look at the movement now and see how it performs. This movement is not to be confused with the 6R. It's a completely different architecture engineered to compete against the top grade ETA 2892. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles like SI hairspring or a long power reserve, but it's very consistent and usually performs at cost. I've looked at a ton of these and plus six seems to be the average. But this movement is used in Credor watches, so that should give you a vote of confidence because it's a pretty good movement. So zero seconds a day dial up and let's look at 12 down. The rate between these two main positions will give you your on the wrist performance. How do I know? Thousands of watches tested on the time grapher and then in real life. This one should perform about plus 2.5 seconds a day on the wrist. Okay, so the moment of truth. What is that price? Well, this is an upper end Seiko. If you hold this in your hand and you hold a 63 mass, it just blows it out of the water. There are negatives. I went through that in the video. There's a lot more I want to talk about, but this video is way too long. And there is good news. This one is not limited. And we got the SJE 101, the black dial version, also not limited. That means when the hype dies down, you're, I have to tiptoe around this because of YouTube, but you'll be happy. Right now, full retail, this one comes in at 2800 USD, $700 less than the 62 mass remake, the SJE093. I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts in the comments. And guys, on your way out, please do me a favor and click that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this one, then make sure to check out the two I have for you on the right of your screen right now. And I'll see you there.